Welcome to Cavaletto Studios, I'm Chris. Today I will demonstrate how to get to those tough areas and trigger points with the foam roller. We will transition quickly through the hips, the legs, and then onto the upper back. There will be no stretch breaks in this class, so be sure to catch my video post foam roll stretching to get the full benefits of foam rolling. So let's get started. We're going to begin with the main part of the glute. That's a pretty easy area to roll, but we're gonna go deeper into the glute. So let's start on the left side, leaning onto your left hand, and right away you're gonna pull your left ankle over your right thigh. Pull it in tight, if that's comfortable to you. And then you're going to draw the roller to the top of the glute and to the bottom. Just massage it out. Just notice if you find any tender spots or trigger points. Sit right on that trigger point and then pull that left knee in and out. So that's how we get right in there. You want to pin it and move around right on top of that trigger point. You can even slowly move up that and down that glute, moving that left knee up and down. Just getting into those, that trigger, any of those trigger points. Then from there, you can keep moving on. You can always come back to more trigger points because we have a lot of ground to cover, a lot of different tough areas, those tough spots we're going to get into. Straighten out your left leg and then drop to your left elbow. Move up towards the top of your glute. So you're kind of sliding your body forward. So the roller is towards the top of your glute. And then you're going to roll towards that left side and then just do a gentle rock. So you're going into that TFL that tenor fascia latte, or a big part that helps rotate and move that hip, and it attaches to our IT band. So keeping that top right knee bent, foot on the floor, pull your left knee in and out as you lean on to that left side. So another great way to just pin and stretch, get any of that tish, trigger point tissue to soften and help it move more. One more, and then let that leg rest and fall towards the floor. Lean a little more to your left, like you're almost going into that hip flexor, and do a gentle, maybe a half an inch rock into that front hip flexor, and then back into the glute. And now we're gonna go into the other side. So you're gonna go lean over to your right butt cheek and go into the right hand Bring your right ankle over your left thigh. And again, roll to the top and the bottom of that glute. You want to find the trigger points. So once you find it, pull that knee up and down. And maybe just pulling it, even if you don't find any trigger point, you might find some tender spots. And it just helps massage out that glute. Moving all the way to the top and then towards the sits bones, the bottom of that glute. Then from here, after you've found those trigger points, moved around, we're gonna straighten out that right leg and drop to your right elbow. And then slide yourself forward so the roller goes to the top of the glute and then roll towards your right side. And then you're going to pull that right knee in and out. So again, great way to get it towards that hip flexor, TFL the area that attaches where that IT band comes up the leg. So we're not gonna roll the IT band today, but we're gonna get pretty darn close to the area that gets tender. So we're getting the connective tissue above it, the muscle area there. One more bend and straighten. Awesome. And then you're gonna just bring those knees to the floor, push yourself up to a tabletop. And we're going to transition to our quads or the front of the thighs. So a lot of times people just roll their thighs and we want to get into those trigger points or those areas that are very, uh, just a little more sensitive or tight. So you're going to drop to your elbows or your forearms and bring the roller right above your knees. So once it's there, you're going to alternate bending and straightening your leg, knees. 
bending and straightening. Just a great way to test out how those quads are. Then walk your elbows back about a half an inch. So this one's a little bit slower going because you can always just move forward and back in place like we normally do or bend and straighten. And that's where you can really find those areas. And then walk your elbows back another half an inch and then bend and straighten. So you're getting into those tough spots in the quads, trying to relax as much as you possibly can. And roll backwards again. Again, just gently moving that roller up the thighs and bending and straightening. And then move them up again and a little bend and straighten. Try to relax your shoulders as much as you can. And then a little higher. So just keep working your way up the thigh to where it feels comfortable. And then you can't go any higher. And once you get there, then you're going to walk your elbows forward and gently drag that roller back down your thighs towards above your knees. Now we're going to tilt the body slightly to your right. So now you're slightly bending that, I'm bending my left knee just enough. So you're kind of going more towards the inside edge of that quad on the left, but the outside edge on the right quad. And then you're gently going to just push your body backwards rolling along. So as you're rolling, I should come up and rolling, if you can peek here, see along the outside edge here, you're getting at the lateral head of the quad. But as you get over, you might even go a little more to the side and get the edge of that IT band. And you're also getting a little bit on the inside edge of that left leg. And then pull yourself back up. Now, if you find a spot, Pause on it and bend and straighten that right knee. It might even be too intense to do that, so you just drag your body forward and back. And then on the left leg, don't worry about that. We are going to get to inner thigh, so we'll get more into that one. All right, one more time up and down, trying to relax that right quad. I know easier said than done. And then go back towards the knees. And then we're going to just shift our body all the way to the left. So you're going to the outside edge of that left leg. Bend your right knee slightly just so you get a little more leverage. And start to roll your body backwards. So you're going towards the outside edge of that left quadricep now or front of the thigh. And if you find a trigger point, you just pause on it. These are a little easier to find when you tilt your body. Sometimes we don't find them when we're just going straight up and down. And again, if you find a spot, maybe bend and straighten if your body can handle it. If that's too painful, then don't do that. And then we're going to slide off the back. Now, when we're done with all of this, the best thing to do is stretch all the different body parts. But right now, we're just going to focus on getting through them all those tough spots. So now you're going to come up and sit on top of the roller and we're going to go into hamstrings. So we've got into the glute, the TFL area, the tough area, and then those, the lateral head of that quad, which is very challenging to get to. So hamstrings, if you have trouble reaching the floor behind you, you can always put two yoga blocks or something behind you to hold yourself up. You're going to straighten out your left leg and I want you to take your right ankle and cross it over your left thigh above your knee if you can. If it doesn't go there, then that's fine. You can bring it a little lower. And you're going to slide backwards so the roller goes to the top of your hamstring, right where your leg and your butt cheek meet. And then you're just going to rock your body side to side. You can be on your fingertips. And then you continue to walk your body backwards and continue to roll literally side to side on that left leg. So the right foot on top is just for added pressure. If it's too much, you can always bring the foot next to you. But it's just an easier way to get into that hamstring as you rock side to side. And keep gently moving yourself backwards, massaging along that hamstring. 
Keep working your way down. If you find a spot, maybe just straighten and bend that knee, that left knee. Keep working your way. So instead of sliding side to side, you're rocking. You're rolling across the inside to the outside edge. You might have to stick your bottom on the floor and then lift up and then scoot back more. So you're working your way down the hamstring towards the knee, but we never go behind the knee. So you don't want to go into that area, that soft spot behind the knee. Let's keep it safe. Once you get towards the knee though, I want you to work your way back up the hamstring, literally rocking your body through the heel on the floor as you push your body forward and go up that hamstring. Just a great way to massage it out. Get any of those trigger spots until you get all the way to the top. And then you're going to release the right ankle, straighten the right leg, and then pull that left ankle over the right thigh. And we're at the top again. Now you're going to rock that body side to side. The more movement you can get, the better. Maybe you lift and roll all the way to the right leg, all the way to the left. Maybe it's a smaller movement. And then start to slide your body backwards. And again, use yoga blocks. You can always put your elbows maybe on a stack of pillows or if you have a low stool, you can lean on. Sometimes this can be challenging if your arms are not as long. They don't reach the floor or if they just get tired. Just keep working your way towards the knee. But again, not going into the back of that knee joint. Same thing. You can also hold yourself up on your knuckles. Once you get to that knee close to it, you start to rock it and move your body forward so that roller goes back up that hamstring towards your glute. Keep on rocking. So you're moving and rocking, sliding forward till you get to the top. And then once you get to that top, you can release your bottom to the floor and feel those hamstrings, maybe a little blood flow. Then we're going to take the roller to the side. So let's start at taking it to, you're going to be on your left side, laying on your left side with the roller on your right and your right knee on the roller. So if you need to go on your belly, that's fine. And then roll onto your left side and then bring your right knee on top of that roller. So the roller is right above that knee, the knee is bent, that right knee is bent. So you're putting a little pressure, we're doing the inner thigh, and you're going to straighten and bend that knee, that right knee. So you're just getting into that inner thigh. Then you're gonna scoot your body just a little bit forward towards the roller, so the roller moves up the thigh a little bit. This is a great way to get those trigger points on the inner thigh. Bring it up a little higher. And just notice what you have going on. Bring that roller up a little higher, straighten and bend. So this is a great way to foam roll those trigger points, those tough spots, like inner thigh. Bring it up a little higher. Just keep going up that inner thigh. If it's super tender, don't put as much pressure. But that inner thigh, it can really affect you. Like even down into the calf, it can affect you into the knee. It can rotate your hips. So if it gets really tight, one side more than the other, you can find, find uh, lots of uh, residual effects, different areas of the body. So once you get up to the top of that thigh, maybe put the roller in the middle of the inner thigh and just row straighten the leg and then move your body forward and back so you go all the way up to the inner thigh and back into the knee so you're getting that whole area one more and then when you're done and again you would take the time to stretch that inner thigh but that's at a later time for us we're going to come up and rotate to the other side so now you're going to come on to your right side and bring your left knee onto that roller and you're going to straighten and bend. So we're working our way all the way around the whole upper leg. 
And then we're gonna get into the lower leg as well. And then we'll get to upper body. Save the best for last, right? Loosening up our mobility in the upper body. And then a little bit higher. Again, moving that roller up, straightening and bending that left knee. Being sure to take water breaks if you need it and after foam rolling, good idea to hydrate, hydrate. Because we are getting toxins out of the body when we foam roll. All right, once you get to the top of the inner thigh, maybe bring the roller to the middle. You can straighten out that left leg and roll yourself forward and back. So it goes from the hip towards the knee. Getting that whole area. Maybe you have one tender spot and you need to go back to it and bend and straighten the knee, that's always an option. And then release. Now we're gonna come all the way up and you're going to sit longwise on your mat. Bring the roller across your mat so we can go to calf muscles. So we're gonna go to the lower leg, hands behind the back. You're welcome to drop to your elbows and you can also do this all the way on your back. So you're going to start with the right leg, the right foot. You're going to cross your left ankle over that right ankle. And if you can, lift your body up and then start to circle your right ankle. And as you're circling, you're sliding your body forward. Maybe you just keep your hips on the floor and circle the ankle, and that's fine. And you want to circle both directions. So as you're doing the calf, the key here too is to circle that ankle. That's how we really get into those, find those trigger points, get in there, loosen them up, and then keep moving up the calf towards the knee. So everything we've done, we've been moving down towards the knee, now we're gonna be moving up towards the knee. More connective tissue. Then you circle that ankle and move yourself backwards so you're moving down the middle of the calf. Now the calf, very important, there's three areas that you want to get. So we just did the middle, so now we're going to do the outside. So tilt your body slightly to the right and your right foot to the right. You're down by the ankle, start to circle the ankle, put a little pressure on that roller, and then maybe lift the body or just bend and straighten, but you got to circle at the same time. Sometimes that can be a little challenging or just slide your body forward and move yourself slowly up the outside edge of that right calf. And then when you get up close to the knee, you start to circle as you move backwards. So changing direction of the ankle, ankle circles. All the way down. So again, if you might, you might find some trigger spots. So if you do, just pause there on them and rotate. Turn your foot, third area. Turn your right foot to the left. Leg is still crossed, so we're going the inside edge now of that calf. Circle the ankle and start to slide yourself forward. And this might be an area you felt it, maybe it's more on the outside. Each side is a little different. Circle, circle, keep sliding forward. And then once you get up pretty close to the knee, Change direction of your ankle circle and move on back down towards the foot. And again, like I said, you can always be on your elbows. You would just have to kind of scoot your body. It's given options. And if you are all the way on your back, same thing. You would probably just more bend and straighten. That's an option. So once you get to the top of that calf, so we've done the middle, the outside edge, and the inside edge, we're going to the left now. So bring that roller down by the ankle, close to it. Cross your right ankle over the left. Lengthen through the spine. Find the middle of that calf. Rotate the left ankle. And then you're going to start to slide your body forward so that roller moves up the calf towards the knee. And you might find here, here's your secret, one calf might be way more sensitive than the other. And that just means you're normal. You got to work on that side a little bit more, trying to get those night tight spots out. Change rotation of the ankle, work your way back down towards the heel. Keep working it, slow and controlled. That's what we want. When you get down there, again, take your time. Tilt to the left. 
So now I'm leaning more on my left hip. My left foot is tilted to the left. I'm going to circle the left ankle and then start to draw my body forward so that roller goes up the outside edge of the calf, the left calf. Keep circling. Might find a trigger point and need to pause there. You can always come back to it. Once you get to the top, come back down. And sometimes it takes several times to get rid of those knots. If there's a big one there, you just come back. Maybe several times during the day, best way to get it out. Not just work it, work it, work it for a long period of time. That can make it a little oversensitive. So then you're going to turn your body slightly to the right. Go to the inside edge of that left leg. Circle the ankle as you push yourself forward. Or bend and straighten, either one. It's a good arm workout while you're at it. That's why we're going to do upper body last. We'll loosen it up. Get it warmed up and then roll it all the way towards the top. And then back down towards the ankle. So you want to get all three areas of the back of that calf. And then when you're done, release those legs. So we did the back of the leg, and now we're going to do the front and the, sh the shin, which is the shin. So you're going to make sure you avoid the bone, so it's going to be more on the front outside edge of the shin, the lower leg. So let's come to a tabletop position. Again, this is another tough one, is getting rid of those shin splints and, then, and those trigger points in the shins. So you're going to bring your shins onto the roller. You can have your toes tucked under. So the goal is we're going to start on the right. So drop your hips slightly to the right. So you go to the outside edge of that right shin bone. So one option is to straighten your left leg and then just pull that right knee towards your hands and back out with that slight right tilt. One option there. If you want to get a little deeper, you can stack your ankles. So that's an option. And notice the ankle roll. Try it out. Yes, that is a fabulous way to get rid of the trigger point. So you're leaning to the right, you're on the right shin, and you're rotating the right ankle as you move your knee in and out. So you're going up and down that shin, massaging it along. Great way to get rid of shin splints or prevent it. The more to the side you can go is even better. You can get a whole side plank area going there. And back to that ankle. Good. Place the knees on the floor in front of the roller. We're going to do the left side. So bring your shins back up onto that roller. Drop your hips to the left. So you go to the outside of the shin bone. Your right leg can be straight out for support, and then you pull that left knee towards your hand. Slide it in, and then push it back out. And you can also do this on your elbows if your wrists are getting tired. And then you can also cross your right ankle over the left ankle if you want a little bit more pressure on that shin. And then don't forget about rotating, rotating that left ankle. A couple more times. In and out. Maybe drop a little further. See if you can get really to the side of that shin. And then we will release. Good. Go ahead and bring your knees in front of the roller. And then have a seat in front of the roller. So we just got the front and back of the lower leg, all the whole area of the upper leg, glute TFL. So now we're going to move to the upper back. We're going to start out and we want to get the muscles along the spine and a lot of times we'll go with wide arms, but we're going to pull the elbows in, really get those muscles to protrude. So you're going to lean back on the roller so the rollers across the shoulder blades. Bring your fingertips on top of your head and pull your elbows in nice and close. And then you're going to slightly tilt your chin forward, holding the back of your head. So your arms are over the top of your head. Start to 
open up that chest, like lean back just enough, then push through your feet, lift to a bridge, and then roll your upper back, like around the shoulder blade area. And pulling those elbows in, tucking the chin slightly will help get along the spine, those muscles in between those shoulder blades. And you want this to feel good. One more roll up and down. And then you're gonna find the middle of the shoulder blades and lower your hips and release. Now you're gonna drop to um, either side. I'm gonna start on my left because I'm here and I can face you. You're gonna drop all the way on your armpit onto the roller and your arm, left arm, elbow on the floor behind the roller, hand supporting your head. If you are missing lymph nodes, please do not roll into where the lymph nodes are missing or put too much pressure there. You can stay backwards into the shoulder blades and just find the trigger points and move the arm. Otherwise, I want you to go into that armpit, a little bit of pressure there. Good. And then extend the left arm and drop your head towards your shoulder. So left ear to left shoulder, left arm extended out, and the left armpit on that roller. And then you can use the other hand if you want. I'm using it to support my head. Or you can even lay it on the roller as you melt into that armpit. It can be a little intense and see if you can maybe even lift that left arm slightly off the floor and then glide it maybe a few inches to the right and left, that whole arm, that left arm, getting into that armpit. A lot of stuff going on under there, right? Rotator cuff connections, a lot of shoulder muscles. Then you're gonna lift your head up and you're going to bring the roller a little bit higher so it's going onto the back of your arm, the tricep. Let your left ear go to the left arm and just literally roll yourself. Use your right hand to move that roller up and down so you're rolling the back of that arm, that left arm, and then turn your palm up, continue rolling. So getting the back of the arm and the tricep can be a little challenging as well. Palm back down, and then go ahead and lift your head. Bring the roller back towards the armpit, and then you're gonna pull your left elbow onto the roller, but just a little bit in front of it, and then move yourself forward so the roller moves to the top of your shoulder. Elbows bent, and the top of the back of the back of your hand is facing the floor, the palm is facing to the sky. And then I want you to lean forward towards that arm. Put a little bit of pressure behind that, on that shoulder, right on the top of your shoulder. And then sway, straighten and bend your left arm as you're leaning into it. So just another way to get into that arm. You can even bend the elbow now and pull it up towards the sky. Not the elbow, but the hand. <laughs> And then, like you're doing a uh, windshield wipers, bringing the hand up and down, or like a high five. One more, and release. So let's just go ahead and sit all the way up. So it's a nice way to get right back in that spot. If you're not sure where it is, you can use your fingers to find it, that soft spot right behind the shoulder, and then we've got into the <clears throat> tricep. We're gonna switch sides, so let's go to the right. So you're gonna go into that right armpit. Relax the arm, good. Now if you want, you can hold your head, especially if you're missing lymph nodes. Same thing on this side, maybe you stay back, you support your head, stay in the shoulder blade. Otherwise, you're gonna go into the armpit, draw your right ear to the right shoulder, arm straight. And I want you to just relax and rest right here on that armpit. And then little tiny lift up with the right arm and slide it side to side, and just notice the difference. You can, again, have your head resting on the roller or on your, under your, your hand under your head. And just notice what's going on on this side. If you're on your right now and you use the mouse a lot, maybe the right side has more issues if your right 
hand dominant. And then you're going to bring that roller higher up onto the back of your arm. You can let your right ear go to the right arm, left hand on the roller, and then slide that roller up and down, getting into that tricep. And then turn the palm up. And then back down. And then bring your hand down, bring the roller back to your armpit. This time you're going to pull that right elbow on the bottom side of the roller, bring it a little bit forward, and then move the roller to the very top. Remember that soft spot we were on the other side? Top of your shoulder or shoulder blade. Bring your bent right elbow on, you know, it's resting on the roller, not way high, but it's more in front, the bottom side of it. The palm faces the sky and then the back of the hand towards the floor. Your left hand can be a fist under your head to support it. And then you can lean forward into that arm. So you're putting a little pressure on the back of the shoulder and then straighten and bend that right arm. So getting into that, that spot back there can sometimes be a trigger. Or you can bring your arm, keep the elbow on the roller and keep it bent and then bring the hand to the sky and then the back of the hand towards the floor. Again, rotating through, massaging out any trigger points. If you've got any old shoulder injuries, this can be a little challenging. One more time. And then we're going to release all the way up. So again, move the shoulder a little. Maybe you feel a little more movement. So we got the back of the arm, the shoulder. We still want to get the bicep and a little bit of the chest wall to open things up. So the bicep and the chest, that's a tough place to get some of those trigger points. So you're going to bring the roller right next to you, either side. I'm starting on my left and I'm going to drop to my belly. So bringing the roller on my left side, I'm going to bring my left arm and you can do the right. We're going to do both. Bring your chin onto your hand, under your hand, the, the hand under the chin. <laughs> Right arm is going to be out, left arm, oh my gosh, I'm backwards again. Left arm out to the side. The roller is right underneath that bicep. And then I want you to just slide your body right and left. So the roller is moving from the elbow up to the armpit and the palm is down. So you're rolling on that bicep. This is a tough spot to roll sometimes. Start to rotate your thumb towards the floor. So your palm is facing the feet. Then you're going to keep rotating that palm towards the sky, thumb towards your feet. So you're really rotating through that bicep towards the outer edge. And then you're going to start to rotate your thumb back to the floor as you're rolling side to side. And then the palm towards the floor might feel a little relief. And then if you want to try one more time, flip the palm upwards, thumb towards the feet. You really can get into there. If you find a spot, just pause on it. You can do a little movement with the arm. Then you're going to release, bend the elbow. So go ahead and bring the roller closer to you. You're going to turn it at a slight angle. And then you're going to bring your chest. You're going to bring the roller right under that chest wall. Let your chin rest on the roller. So you're putting pressure right on that chest wall. Extend that left arm out and then sweep the left arm along the floor. Palm is down. So you're just getting into that chest a little deeper, right where the shoulder chest wall connects. That can be a little tender. Especially if you just worked out. And then release and we're going to move the roller to the other side. So just take your roller to the right. So we're going to do that right bicep. Actually, I'm going to turn around. So you're going to be on your belly. Make a fist, bring your chin to the fist. Extend your right arm out to the side and then bring that roller right in the middle of your bicep. 
palm faces the floor, and then start to draw your body gently side to side. You're rolling along that bicep. Then start to rotate your palm towards the back of your feet, like towards the, your feet and the thumb towards the floor. Notice the change and then start to rotate your palm upward. If it's too painful, you can keep it down. So you're getting a little more into that bicep and then rotate that palm back down towards the floor. And then one more time, flip your palm up. Notice the difference on this side compared to the other. Maybe you find a spot and you just do a little bend and straighten or a little movement of the arm, shifting it. And then release. And then you're going to bring that roller at an angle, like you're gonna hug it. Just kind of pull that it nice and tight into your chest. Bring your chin on top of the roller. Do you support your neck? You're gonna reach the right arm out or whatever side you're on. And that roller again is pressed right up into that chest wall. And then you're going to draw that right hand, skim the floor. Skim the floor. And this side might not feel as much. Maybe it feels more intense. It depends on what you have going on in the chest wall there. One side might be tighter than the other. And if you have lymph nodes missing, this is where you would probably be using a soft roller or even just maybe a towel just to get that range of motion. A rolled up towel can also work, just helping loosen things up without putting the pressure on an area that doesn't want, doesn't need that. Last one. All right, done with that. Now we're gonna come all the way back up. So we have two more areas. So we're gonna get the forearm and then the neck head area. So you're gonna actually bring your roller longwise on the mat. Take your right palm, you're gonna turn it upward and place the forearm on the roller. Then take your left arm and crisscross it. So you're placing pressure on that right arm, forearm with the left, and then you're gonna draw your arm, arms right and left across that roller. So you're massaging the forearm all the way to the wrist. So make sure you're getting into the wrist, towards the back of the hand, all the way up towards the elbow. Especially in that forearm, you might feel something. Then you're going to flip your right palm down and you're going to continue to roll. So now you're getting underneath the bottom part of that forearm. And one side might be more tender than the other. If you find a trigger point, you just wiggle those fingers as you pause on it. Last one. And then we release. So if you find that trigger point, if you felt like tender spots in that forearm, you can always use your thumb, press it and wiggle the fingers. It all connects and gets those fingers moving. Let's go to the other arm. So left arm up and then right palm, right hand on top or arm, and then draw with a little pressure from the forearm to the elbow, through the wrist to through the forearm to the elbow. And again, if you find a trigger spot, just wiggle those fingers. a few times feeling what's going on and then you're going to flip your palm down so you do the bottom side now and you might be really surprised by one arm compared to the other almost there good and then we're going to release now from here we're going to move that roller across that mat again just turn it longwise and we're going to turn around and we're going to lay our head on the roller like a pillow so just get comfy here and your knees are going to be bent feet flat so we protect the back the back is just melting into the floor so you're going to turn your head to one side so i'm on my left it doesn't matter we're going to do both sides when you're tilt your head to the left I want you to bring the roller a little bit higher on your skull so it's basically not touching the soft part of your neck, it's on the occipital bone of your head, 
very back, that little nodule. If you ever get a massage and they get in there, that's what I'm talking about, right there in the occipital of the head. So head is tilted, and then once you're there, you're going to nod your head yes, and you're going to nod your head no. You can close your eyes. You can get comfy. Maybe a little circle, one direction, then the other. And then from here, you're going to turn your head to the other side and find that same spot on the other side, the occipital. Adjust the roller and then nod yes and no and yes and no. Then you're going to go from there Bring the head to neutral right in the middle, but bring it a little bit higher up again, and then draw your head side to side. So you're massaging the back of the skull just to check in to see what's going on. It's all connected to the occipital. We want to make sure it's all working. Massaging out the fascia. There's fascia in the head. Now you're going to turn your head again back to the left. Bring the roller lower this time. So you're bringing it below the occipital right into the muscle. We're not on the side. We're diagonally behind, so we don't hit the vertebrae of the neck, and we're not directly on the side. So just that muscle, and if you're not sure, you can reach back and touch it. It's that thick muscle that attaches right up to that occipital bone. And you're leaning on it, and you're going to nod your head yes. So you're massaging out that muscle, and then you can even nod it, the head no. Yes and no. If you find a trigger point, just try to relax on it and breathe. And when you're done with that side, you get to do the other side. So then you turn your head the other way. Again, move the roller to where it needs to go, a little below that occipital bone. When you find it, do a gentle nod yes. It's not a fast movement. And then a gentle nod no. And yes and no. If you find a trigger spot, just pause on it. And then back towards the center. And then you can hug your knees. You can roll it up. And that is how you get to all those tough trigger points and tough spots and foam roll them. You're all rolled out now. Take a deep breath in. Reach the arms overhead. Exhale, palms to heart space. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.